Hello, my dear students. Welcome again in English 810 for the Vocational Education Studies. We're going to enter Unit 7 today, and we will start it with a grammar lesson. By the end of today, we're going to achieve two main objectives. The first one is to identify reflexive pronouns. The second objective is to identify idioms. Before I start my lesson, let me ask you a general question about reflexive pronouns. What is reflexive pronouns? Can you think with me? Let's see. A reflexive pronoun is a pronoun that refers to the subject. Let me clarify this more. Let's see the reflexive pronouns as displayed in here. The singular pronouns are myself, yourself, himself, herself, and itself. Let's move to the plural pronouns. They are ourselves. Pay attention since it's plural, so it determines a group of people. Yourselves and themselves. Can you not notice any differences here? Let's see. The differences between singular and plural reflexive pronouns is only one simple thing, which is the F letter. When it's in the singular uh, type, it is pronounced an F, but when it's plural, it's pronounced V. Let me show you this example. Instead of saying yourself in singular, it is yourselves in plural form. I'll clarify what I have already explained in extra examples. Let's see. Number one, he hurt himself when he fell down. Now, pay attention, my dear students. Himself here is representing the he. So, that's why it's called reflexive pronoun. It is representing the subject itself in a sentence. Let's go further. I felt sorry for myself after I failed the test. Now, myself is again deter determining I. So, myself and I are explaining each other. They were able to find the mole by themselves. Now, themselves here refers to they. I'll give you now an exercise. We're going to do this exercise together, or I'll give you two minutes to do it, and then we will check the answers together. Let's see. This exercise is telling you to complete the paragraph with reflexive pronouns from the blue box here. Pay attention. We have four reflexive pronouns. Myself, themselves, herself, and yourselves, which is plural. So, we're going to read the paragraph together and then I'll give you two minutes to do the exercise. Let's see. We all need to pay more attention of ourselves in the school. The one in red, the first one, is an example. It's done for you. Students need to depend on blank in improving their English language and read more to strengthen it. For example, my friend reads stories by blank every two days. Also, she writes some articles to develop her writing skills. I promised blank to change my studying habits from now on, and I advise you all to start changing blank. What you need to do is, you have to refer to the blue box, as you can see, and choose the correct pronoun. I'll give you two minutes and I'll get back to you.
Okay, now here are the answers. Let's see together. As I've previously read, the first one is done for you, so we will go on from the next um, exercise. Students need to depend on themselves. Now pay attention. Themselves is referring to the students. They are both the same thing in improving their English language and read more to strengthen it. For example, my friend reads stories by herself. It could be here himself also, but the only option I have at the blue box is herself. So definitely I'm referring to a female. Now, herself is referring to my friend. Let's go on. Also, she writes some articles to develop her writing skills. I promised myself. Now, myself here is referring to I, to change my studying habits from now on. And I advise you all to start changing yourselves. Yourselves here is referring to you all. The word all is giving me a symbol that it is plural. I hope you all got it right. Let's move now to the second objective, which is the idioms. What is an idiom? Have you ever heard about this word or let's say about this part of speech? Let's see. An idiom is two or more words that have a special meaning of a certain thing. Is it clear? I don't think so. Let's make it clearer. This is an example. When I say, I am over the moon, what do I mean here? I mean that I am so happy. But instead of using, I am so happy, I use, I am over the moon. Okay, now the next question is, before I move to the next slide, why do you think idioms are essential or let's say important? Because sometimes it adds different taste in writing or in speaking or maybe it gives you a better explanation and meaning while talking about certain things. Now, let's take more idiom examples and see. This idiom is saying, busy as a bee. When do I use this idiom? When I am too busy. And if, instead of saying that I'm too busy, I just could say I am busy as a bee. Another idiom is cool your jets, which means calm down. I'm sure you all know what is a jet. A jet is a very fast plane. So, if you are behaving too fast or you are taking a very fast action towards something, I could tell you slow down or calm down. But instead of saying these random words, I could use an idiom by saying cool your jets. Let's move to the third one, which is commonly used. A piece of cake, which means too easy. For example, I'll ask you, how was the test? Instead of saying that it was too easy, you could say it was a piece of cake, which determines how easy it was. Now, let me give you a very simple exercise about some idioms. We've got four idioms here at the table. I want you to match each idiom with its meaning. It could be a bit hard, but think of it. I'll give you more than two minutes. This time you've got three minutes. Try to do it, and we will answer the uh, exercise together. Go ahead. Let's see the answers. Number one, get off on the wrong foot. What does it mean? It means begin 
something badly. C is one. What do I mean by this when I say begin something badly? For example, I'm starting a project and I haven't started it well from the beginning. So instead of saying all of this scenario, I could just say I got off the wrong foot and it makes an explanation to what I'm implying. Let's move to the second one, the last straw. Two is D. Let's move to D and see the answer together. The final problem in a series of problems. Let's assume that you've been through many problems today. The last problem is called the last straw. For example, um, my car was stuck today. I lost my phone today. The last problem that could come will be the last straw. Now let's move to the third one, against the clock. And I think this is commonly used too. We can hear it in movies or stories sometimes if you are good readers. Three is B. Let's move to B, which means it's rushed and short on time. For example, I have a project that I have to submit to my teacher and I am against the clock doing it, which means I'm rushing. I have no time, so I'm doing it all the time. Like I'm rushing and doing it. The last one, which is break the ice. It is A, make people feel more comfortable. What do I mean by this? For example, you are new to somewhere and you don't know or you're not familiar with the people there. So someone should break the ice in order to, um, let's say, you become so normal and uh, you deal with them the way you want. Let me put the idioms that I have gave you in the exercise in extra sentences in order to clarify them more. The first one, get off on the wrong foot. Look at this example. Helen got off on the wrong foot when she forgot the greeting at her speech. For example, Helen has a speech here and she haven't done the greeting. So her starting was wrong. So she got off on the wrong foot. Let's see the second one, the last straw. When I crashed my car, it was the last straw, which means uh, I've been through many problems and the last problem was crushing the car against the clock. The team was working against the clock to finish the project on time, which means they were rushing in doing the project. Last but not least, break the ice. The teacher organized a few starting games to break the ice on the first day of school because all the students who come on the first day are not familiar with each other. So this, the teacher here, she prepared a breaking ice activity, for example, in order to, uh, let's say, let people feel comfortable with each other. We come to the end of our grammar lesson today. I hope you enjoyed it and you made use of it. We will see you very soon in next lesson. Thank you. Bye-bye.